They are the cyber gang whose ransomware attack has taken down Marks and Spencer. So, who are Scattered Spider and how concerned should we be? Fans of Percy Pig have had a rough week. If you've been trying to order Marks and Spencer's iconic sweetie online, or even trying to pay for them in store, you may have run into a few difficulties. The reason? Well, M&S have been the victim of a massive cyber attack. Massive and also costly. Millions of pounds have been lost in sales. The company's share price hasn't quite fallen off a cliff, but it's certainly taken a tumble. The retailer is remaining pretty tight-lipped, but the suspicion is that a shadowy group known as Scattered Spider is responsible. Mickey Carroll is Sky's science and technology reporter. Good to have you back on the pod, Mickey. Um, first things first, what exactly has happened to Marks & Sparks? So, Easter Monday, they stopped being able to accept contactless payments. I actually went to go and see my brother and I needed to buy him a bouquet of flowers Very and I nice couldn't good. because I didn't have any of my cards on me. Good excuse. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So they stopped doing contactless payments at that point and it kind of slowly became apparent that they were suffering this major cyber attack. Then they stopped a lot of their agency workers from going to their distribution centres again because of the cyber attack. And over the last few days, there's been more and more reports of empty shelves across Marks and Spencers. It's having a massive impact on their business. I just went on the Marks and Spencer website. The website is still up, but you can't make orders through it at the moment. So again, a big part of their business. So do we know how this has happened? So Marks and Spencers at the moment aren't giving many details. Mm. There's some stuff that's been leaked and there's a lot of stuff that cyber experts are able to deduce. So what reports are saying has happened and experts kind of have verified is it looks like cyber criminals were able to access MS's systems and if it's the group that everyone thinks it is, they probably did that going through employees. To what end? It's about money. So again, MS haven't said this, in situations like this, usually they will be being held ransom. So Ra Ransomware, they call it, don't they? Yeah, exactly. So their systems will be being held, and their data especially, will be being held by hackers until they give them money. So who do we think is behind this? All signs point towards a group called Scattered Spider. An interesting name. Explain that. I bet there's a story behind it. It's a very good name because it's very apt. Scattered Spider, I mean, I just called them a group. They're more of a sort of conglomerate network. They actually didn't name themselves. So Scattered Spider were named by a company called CrowdStrike, who you may remember from mm. last year's big tech failure. Anyway, they named them a few years ago because they needed to have something to refer to this group as. They work in small hacking groups, but they kind of come together and brag to each other and share tips and stuff. So when it comes to ransomware, when it comes to attacks on this scale, they've got something of an impressive CV then? Yes, Scattered Spider are kind of one of the really big players in terms of hackers. I spoke to a security company yesterday who said that they are their main priority in groups that they're tracking. They've got a stellar CV in terms of hacking. So they're known to have hacked hundreds of companies around the world, but their biggest one that really hit the headlines was in 2023, they hacked MGM and Caesars, which is in Las Vegas. So they shut down a lot of the casino operations for Caesars and held it until Caesars gave them $15 million. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> 15 million? This is a huge industry. I mean, in the UK, for example, in the last five years, British businesses are thought to have lost £44 billion through cyber attacks. That's not ransomware alone. That's not, That's just not ransom. £44 billion exactly. paid out, but it's net losses yeah, across exactly. businesses. Yeah, yeah. OK, so how on earth are they doing this? How do you get into the Marks and Spencers through the back door, as they used to say? Mm. Without wanting to sound like I'm applauding them, Scattered Spider are quite clever. So they're known to use human vulnerability as their tactic to get in. You're going to have to explain that. As a so, <laughs> so instead of finding kind of holes in a firewall or something, a really kind of technical solution, what they do instead is they exploit people's stress and people's kind of lapsadaisicalness when you're logging on at work and stuff like that to get people's emails and passwords and then get into systems that way. So some of the things that they do is they create fake login pages with kind of what looks like the multi-factor authentication mm -hmm. tools that we all get. Um, they create fake ones of those and send them out to people or just redirect people to links. They pose as IT support workers and phone people or message them on Teams and then speak to them on Teams. Mm -hmm. 
And the other kind of known tactic for them is they phone phone companies and get them to switch people's numbers onto different SIMs that they have control of. So in, in essence, when you say human vulnerability, someone at Marks & Spencer has got something very badly wrong. Either reply to an email, answer a phone call, put their details in somewhere that they shouldn't have. And that was enough for this organisation to get in. We don't know mm. about Marks & Spencer's. Mm. If it's the same as other scattered spider attacks, if it is scattered spider, then it looks like it, yeah. So how much do we know about this group themselves, scattered spider? So Scattered Spider, they've got that kind of devolved network of hacking groups that meet on places like Telegram, but also hacking forums. Most hacker groups, and this has come from US security agencies, so it's not just an assumption, most hacker groups are from Russia or ex-Soviet states. Mm -hmm. These people are from the UK, Europe and the US. There was a young guy arrested in Walsall in the West Midlands mm -hmm. a few years ago for being involved. Uh, one of the ringleaders is thought to be from Scotland. He mm -hmm. got arrested recently. And that makes them quite different, but it also gives them an advantage because when we're talking about them phoning people up and pretending to be people, they're speaking with English accents, American accents, Scottish accents you're immediately a little bit more trusting if you're in the UK and you, you hear that voice. Yeah, I mean, how, how many of us have you know received a call from a number that we don't know and there is a noticeably foreign accent on the other end of it? And before they've barely uttered a handful of words, you've hung mm. up on that call. OK, so they've gained access to the system. They are, we presume, holding Marks and Spencers to ransom. It's the software that they're using, which is the other dimension to this story. Tell me about Dragon Force. So Dragon Force, while I've just said that they're not Russian, Dragon Force <laughs> <laughs> is a piece of Russian malware mm -hmm. that kind of goes in and takes companies hostage. But what's really interesting about Dragon Force is two months ago, they posted online saying, we're changing our business plan. We are no longer just Dragon Force. We are Dragon Force the cartel. And if you want, you can use our malware, you can buy it, but you have to give us 20% of your ransom. Sorry, wait a minute. Is this like a McDonald's franchise? Exactly. It's a pretty well-recognised business structure in the world of not hackers. It's just that now they're becoming quite enterprising and branching into corporate life. So this Dragon Force software, what is it? What, a, a suite of different tools that you use? Just explain a little bit more if you can. So if you imagine you've kind of got into a system through someone's email address or anything like that. Dragon Force is able to kind of enter networks and extract data and stuff like that and then send it back to the hackers that way. How big a threat to the UK's IT infrastructure is this sort of activity? The problem constantly with ransomware and hacks like that is while our infrastructure is kind of improving slowly and legally, they're kind of improving their tactics and their technology in ways that, you know, we're just kind of hampered by having to act responsibly by. And so they're always seeming to be one step ahead and it always seems to be getting harder to catch them and more serious when they do stuff like this because so much of our world now is online and remote. Mm. So the options of how you can take down a company are suddenly much more prevalent. When you consider that much of this cyber attacking is coming from state actors, that's really a cause for concern. That kind of hacking structure um, where you've got the state actors at the top, but they're the kind of very significant hackers who are, who are going into electricity grids, that sort of thing. And they may be paying smaller groups like Scattered Spider to help do their grunt work, but they are kind of a really serious threat. There's a group that's called Dragonflies, and they were going repeatedly into Ukraine's electricity grids mm -hmm. over a series of years before the war kicked off with Russia and Ukraine. And, like, first of all, learning how the grid worked and then temporarily shutting it down. Are we capable of stopping these attacks? Given the way that these groups operate, you know, with anonymity, given the tools that they use, they can use them from anywhere in the world. I mean, is it ever possible to stop these attacks without having someone on the inside telling you what is about to happen? Yes. So I think co-op is a really good example of that. So in the same week that Marks and Spencers had an attack, co-op also had an attack. So it's actually last weekend on Saturday, they noticed that there were hackers trying to get into their systems and they stopped it. They shut down a load of their IT systems and it's meant that some of their workers can't work from home, mm -hmm. but they managed to kind of protect their systems. But on the kind of grander scale, there are ways that nations and companies can react to that. 
And it's just about having the infrastructure already in place. It's about being proactive. There's one guy I speak to quite regularly, and he thinks that you need to have a literal kill switch on water systems and electricity grids. If you think that someone's coming in, you know, switch off and it's a physical switch. There are others that think it's all about kind of education. There are loads of ways that you can do this, but there also has to be investment in the tech. Should we be storing all of our information online in the way in which we do then? I mean, you know, these days we have physical documents, passports and all the rest of it, but everything is increasingly becoming biometric, all of our medical data, things like that. I mean, should we be storing this stuff on servers which can be accessed from the outside? I mean, it really depends. It's hard to say, because if we don't store all of that stuff, then the world ceases to work as we currently know it. And we would kind of go backwards quite a few steps. And there are really robust security systems in place, especially on cloud storage sites. So in that way, yeah, I, don't, I kind of don't want to scaremonger people. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, Scattered Spider have been spotted going after two cloud storage sites recently where a lot of people are storing their data. So much as we know that all of our stuff is there, so do all the hackers. And we've, we've mentioned some arrests as regards Scattered Spider, but from what's happening with M&S, what's happening with the cloud storage you've just mentioned, this group isn't going away any time soon, are they? No, I mean, there's thousands of them, and authorities have known about them for years. So no, I don't think they are going away any time soon. However, last year there were five arrests of what, was believed to be the ringleaders, and they did go quiet for a bit. Hmm. So there is clearly like a a hierarchical structure where if you take down the top of the head, (laughs) the kind of hydro stops growing for a bit. Yeah, so if ever we hear a politician talking about smashing the cyber gangs, that's not a particularly likely prospect, at least at the moment. There are entire government agencies devoted to doing that. But when you've got encrypted, end-to-end encrypted messaging is becoming much more common, or is even on Facebook Messenger now. So it's much harder for law enforcement agencies to trace people. But also these gangs are very clever. They pop up and disappear again within kind of half an hour often. And just finally, Mickey, why? Why are they doing this? I mean, clearly, 15 million bucks from Las Vegas signals that, you know, the financial rewards are potentially huge. But it seems like they like to crow about their successes as much as reap the rewards. Absolutely. I mean, like you say, you can earn a lot of money by doing this, but you also get bragging rights. So when a hack like this happens, the forums will just light up of people being like, it was me. And you'll sometimes get if one hacking group claims a hack and then the actual hackers find out, you end up with kind of turf wars where they'll go for each other. And it's actually spilled out into kind of street violence in the real world where hacking groups have gone after each other for claiming certain hacks. Thanks, Mickey. More of her analysis on the website, skynews.com. Don't forget to give us a follow if you like what you've heard. Should be just a click away and we promise not to hack you. The Daily is back again tomorrow.